My name is Chris Holton Jabonski, and it is my great joy and my deep honor to serve you as your minister and to welcome you to another one of our video announcements where you'll hear from me, from Ian, and from Lillian. We'll be sharing lots of news about stuff that's coming our way in the next month or so. Uh, and as always, you'll see there will be some kind of thing that will tie all three of these videos together. Um, and Ian will be coming to you from a mystery location in the church. So, very exciting time in the life of the church. We have uh, the return to our outdoor services, uh, which is very exciting. So we'll be outside on April 3rd, April 17th, May 15th, and June 12th. So do please mark your calendars. All of those will be one service outside at 10 o'clock. We had such a wonderful time in our fall outdoor services. I'm really excited to get back to it. Um, so do please come to those. And in addition, we have lots of wonderful adult programs, lots of great kids programs kicking back up, lots of wonderful music. Uh, so we'll be hearing a little bit more about that from Lillian and from Ian, but I had to just celebrate along with everybody that the musical is starting again. We'll be having Pirates of Penzance. Again, Ian will tell you more about it, but it just feels like a symbolic victory somehow that we get to share that again. So um, mark your calendars for June 3rd and 4th, Friday and Saturday. Um, and really thank Ian and thank all of the music staff and the music committee and team for, for really finding the energy to make that happen. I'm very excited um, for all of our kids and all of our families to be able to have that again. So, and for all of us to celebrate and share with it. As many of you know, we're still chugging along with our stewardship campaign. So if you haven't yet pledged, please do. So many of you have, which is wonderful. So many of you have increased your pledges, which is great. And if you haven't yet been able to pledge or uh, found the buttons to click, uh, do please find them. They're in the email that brought you this. They're on the website. Um, and if you need help finding them, don't hesitate to reach out. All of the stewardship team will be more than happy to help you and the staff is here. Uh, it really makes a huge difference, especially this year as everybody's communication patterns are a bit up in the air. Um, it'll be really wonderful to have this process and continue to make some great strides as we've been doing with fairly compensating our staff and really taking care of our beautiful buildings. So, Everything you can give is deeply appreciated. So do please participate in that. And yeah, we can't wait to hear from Ian about some music uh, and from Lillian about the adult programs. As always, if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out. It has always been and really continues to be my great joy to be able to connect with you all. Uh, and sit down with you. I've been meeting with people again, meeting with a lot of people over Zoom. So I'm very flexible and, and you all are the best part of this job. So don't hesitate to reach out, especially if you're moving through a hard time. I'm here, your late pastoral care team is here. The whole congregation is here uh, to support you. And also if you're finding your way back to the church, uh, if you've been away for a lot of the pandemic and you're ready to dig back in and you want to, we have lots of wonderful work happening all through our social action committee, helping support our um, Afghan family and so many projects, uh, so many ways to help out with climate justice and lots and lots of great stuff going on. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, I would be happy to find some time. So. For now, we'll be able to hear with hear from Ian and from Lillian. And as always, be sure to check out and see if you can see the thing that's similar in all of our videos. And if you can find Ian's secret location in the church. And we'll see you real soon. Avast ye pirates all! My name is Ian Garvey. I'm the music director here at the First Church and I have some news to tell ye. 
The first, of course, is the Pirates of Penzance, the first church musical, has begun, actually. We have started with rehearsals, but it is not too late to join. If you or really your children would like to join the show, it is open to any vaccinated children and youth, kindergarten all the way through high school. We have just had one rehearsal. We have not yet cast the show, so reach out to me, contact me if you would like to join us. If you are watching this on Sunday morning, this afternoon at 1230, we will have a screening of the movie of the show and you are welcome to come and watch it and ask some questions and it'll be a grand old time. So the performances, if you don't want to participate, but please mark your calendars, are going to be June 3rd and 4th. That is a Friday and Saturday and I look forward to seeing you all there. Also, we have four outdoor services coming up, April 3rd, April 17th, May 15th, and June 12th. There's going to be some fabulous music at all of them. They will all be at 10 o'clock. Other services, as usual, will be in the sanctuary at 9 and 11. And starting next weekend, starting in April, the COVID task force is inviting all of you to sing again. I know that's fantastic news for many people. So join us in the hymns. Please sing the doxology. And I look forward to hearing you all. Also, I am if you'll notice, in a mystery location, although it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. If you can guess where I am, please send an email, comment, tell your friends, whatever. It's kind of fun to guess where we are in the church. It is somewhere in the church building, though. And lastly, mark your calendars, please, because there is an in-person concert coming on April 30th at 7.30 p.m. That's a Saturday. Pianist Paul Bempishaw will play a piano concert of all Beethoven music. So he'll tell us a little bit about it, play some amazing music, and all donations received at the concert will support our wonderful instruments. That is our organ, our pianos, the harpsichord. We need some funds to be able to keep them making music for all of you. So that is it for the music program right now. I turn it over to Lillian, who will tell you a little bit about some adult programs. Spring is a busy time, and we know that. And so we've planned these programs so that there are really exciting and interesting educational offerings for you to think about attending. We have two very, very important ones that I want to mention today, and then I'll go on to share with you some of the ongoing programs that keep First Church alive. The first program I want to mention is um, called Democracy as a Spiritual Practice, and it's going to be on Thursday, March 31st, and Thursday, April 14th. Um, this is a two-part series, but you don't need to attend both sections of it. Um, the point of this is that we, as citizens of the United States, are in a moment of crisis when it comes to our democracy. So what we thought was that pairing our Unitarian Universalist values with that crisis might be very helpful for members of First Church and, in fact, from other churches as well. This program, Democracy as a Spiritual Practice, is co-sponsored by First Church in Belmont, First Parish in Concord, um, the Church, uh, UU Church of Manchester, New Hampshire, and Unitarian Universalists for Social Justice. And this um, program is very, very important to all of those groups. The first part of this on March 31st is called Strengthening Our Civic Muscles. And what it does is explores authoritarian regimes through the lens of the very important book on tyranny by Timothy Snyder, which I believe everyone should read. It's um, a captivating account of what has happened in the past. Reverend Patrick McLaughlin of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Manchester, New Hampshire, will be our leader for this program. And he will spend the first half an hour really analyzing that book, um, all of its lessons uh, to be learned. And then we'll go into small group discussion so that we can look at our Unitarian Universalist values and look at some of those lessons and see how we can apply them to our own lives. It's an important program and I hope that you'll join us for it. The second session of that program happens on April 14th and we're really, really honored and pleased to have the Reverend Sharon Welch with us 
who is an author and um, a, a seminarian. Um, she was the head of uh, the Meadville Lombard School. Um, I think she was dean there. Um, she has written several books. One of them is called After the Protests. And so we've called that program After the Protests and explores ways in which we can engage and rebuild our civic society to bring our democracy back into balance. Again, that's going to be content and, and some discussion and breakout rooms. Um, so I do hope you'll, you'll participate in either or both of those sessions. Now the next program I wanted to mention is um, from First Church in Belmont, and it's called Is the War in Ukraine an Ethnic Conflict? This is um, a moment in time we're all affected by, but one of the things we wanted to do was look deeper into that war. Um, it's not just a war of oppression. Um, it is really about um, ethnicity in, many, in, in its many facets. And so um, a group of us got together, uh, David Deese, Livia Rass, Dick Kobayashi, um, and we were, we are very, very happy to say that Professor Gerald Easter, um, who is the chair of the political science department at Boston College, will be with us that day to spend some time really analyzing how, how Ukraine came to be, what are the borders, boundaries, um, what makes it uh, a unique entity in terms of its ethnicity and how it relates to other countries in Eastern Europe. So, and it will also be an opportunity to ask some questions. And one of those questions is, how will our Unitarian Universalist values shape our views and our actions of that conflict? I hope you'll be with us. That's Tuesday, April 5th at 7.30. Both of, all of these programs, by the way, are on Zoom. They're online, and you can, by contacting me, Lillian Anderson, landerson at uubelmont.org, you can get the link to register for both of those programs. Now, our ongoing programs, in case you wanted to do something any day of the week, pretty much, here are a few things that you have um, to choose from coming up. Um, on Saturday, April 2nd, we have First Saturday Film Discussion with Nate Sellers. We're going to be watching the movie Afterlife, which is directed by Hirokazu Koriida. I'm sure I've gotten that wrong, but you can watch that ahead of time. It's available on the Criterion Channel and Amazon Prime. And then come to a really uh, very interesting discussion with Nate about that film. Uh, How Does Your Garden Grow, which is transitioning the title of that group to FCB um, Garden Group. And that is on Thursday, April 7th at 4 p.m. That meets regularly, monthly um, at that time. And um, the gardeners get together to share tips, suggestions, and how to be a better gardener. Uh, now, one other program I want to mention specifically, the FCB History Group Roundtable Discussion, who is which is moderated by our new historian, John Howe, um, meets on the first Thursday of every month at 7.30. That this month, um, April 7th, they will be discussing social action at First Church, capturing the history of the past 50 years. So you don't want to miss that. Just contact Sam Foster and he will send you the link. And then the last program I want to mention is the Belmont UU Alliance program. And every single month they come up with a fascinating uh, topic and person to discuss that topic. And this month, um, in April, they meet on Thursdays at 11 a.m. on the second Thursdays of the month. Um, and this month, they are going to be talking with Gino Farrell on traveling from Accra, Ghana to Naomi, Niger in 1972. So um, day, evening, those programs are available to all of you. And I hope that you'll join us for one or more of them. Well, thanks so much for watching. Uh, so much going on in the life of the church. It's a really exciting time. And as always, we are so grateful for your attention, so grateful for your creativity and your commitment and care. This has been a complex couple years that we've been moving through. And we've come through it stronger, more connected, more thriving and vibrant than ever. So thank you so much 
And again, don't hesitate to reach out if there's any way that I can be of support or any of the staff or all of your leadership. We are very much here for you. So thanks so much. See you soon.